How's everybody doing this afternoon? Good. Good. Thanks for thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to share some things uh, with you. Uh, full gamut of maybe you've never uh, had a, a discipline in your life of fasting and prayer. Uh, maybe you you've had that as part of your life and part of your journey uh, for years and years and years. I'll try to do my best to really share something with. I do with, uh, with everybody uh, possible. Uh, so if, if I haven't had a chance to meet you, uh, like Kyler said, my name is Chris. Uh, I'm married to my wife, Kate. We've been married for 18 years. We have four children, uh, 13, 10, 8, and 6. Uh, and I've been part of the Alpha Park Church pastoral uh, leadership team for 21 years. Uh, so I started when I was three. All right, no, just joking. Um, so I started when I was 21. So you can do the math for 42. Um, and uh, really, really early on, uh, before I even became a pastor, uh, fasting uh, became part of uh, my lifestyle, my pattern, uh, even as a young person. So even as a, as you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, um, I started to, to fast. Uh, you know, baby steps one day, uh, then I tried three days, five days. It was actually during a, a five-day fast in 1998 that God called me into the ministry. Uh, so that's just kind of part of my journey. Uh, it's been a part of my life, and uh, really for years and years now, I've uh, been able to, uh, with God's, well, God's grace, do 21 days uh, pretty much every January. Um, with the exception of this year, so we started uh, January 5th, that Wednesday night, was uh, when we started this 21 days of prayer. And uh, I woke up, you know, I started fasting. I woke up the next morning, and uh, I got the Rona. Rona bit me, and uh, I didn't know it, so I just kept fasting. And uh, so uh, I, I made about seven days, and I was like, I, I, I should stop this. <laughs> this, is not, this is not wisdom. Uh, so... These 21 days have been kind of crazy for me. Uh, you know, I've had a couple of spots here and there when I was able to fast, but uh, I want—I'm excited to, to share with you some things. Uh, I, I brought a couple of copies of, of my book if you want to purchase them afterwards. Uh, and uh, if, if you're—I don't know if, if there's any pastors here. Uh, I actually have a whole full case over there if you want to bring some back for your church. Would love to bless you with that. I'm gonna—I'm gonna share a couple different. Um, you know, the, it's broken up, the book is broken up into 21 days, I'm going to do a couple of, of the sections from, from the book. Um, but before we start, we're going to really look at uh, the prophet Daniel. So there's uh, three different spots in the book of Daniel where, where there's fasting that's happening and being mentioned by him. Uh, but before we get into that, just some kind of fasting 101 we'll start off with. So if you're, if you're taking notes, uh, I have uh, eight real quick. Uh, so kind of fasting 101, practical tips for prayer and fasting before we get into the, the part with, with Daniel. All right, uh, so Luke chapter 14, verse 28, uh, Jesus says this. He says, for which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? How many people have ever heard that before, right? So it's, it's the idea of, you know, count the cost. So before, you know, Jesus is talking about this, this person who's building a tower, you know, he's going through the process of raising the money, saving the money, uh, drawing up what, what he's going to build, recruiting the team that's going to build it. You get the idea. The same happens when we're fasting. I want to encourage you that before you start your time of prayer and fasting, there are some count the cost decisions that you need to make. And, and hopefully some of these tips will be helpful tips to be aware of as you go on this adventure with the Holy Spirit, all right? Number one is this, write down your plan. Write down your plan. So make a specific list of what you're aiming for. Only do what God asks you to do. Don't be, you know, superhero and try to do what everybody else is doing. What God speaks to you to do, do it. And it's best to do this, write down your plan before you start to fast. So don't, don't make up your mind during the fast because you're going to cut it short. Right? You're going you're gonna to get hungry, and you're going to say, oh, I want to do three days, and, and maybe God was speaking to you seven. You get the idea. So list what you will and will not eat and drink. It's easy to be, you know, midway through day four and day five and change your mind and 
lower the bar of expectation. So don't be overly religious about this, but write down your plan. Number one, this list is meant to help yourself to not break your original commitment to yourself. So it's not supposed to be like a, like a law that you have to follow. This is supposed to be a tool that's going to help you when you get weak, when you get hungry, write down your plan. Number two, determine what kind of fast and how long. So will you do a full fast, water and clear liquids only, or will you do a Daniel fast, which, which basically means no meats, no sweets? Will you go for 24 hours? Will you go 48 hours? 72 hours, will you go a full week, 21 days? Uh, sometimes you can fast a meal, right? So if you're, you're going to say for the next 10 days, I'm going to fast lunch every day for the next 10 days. So there's all kinds of different ways for you to fast, but that's number two. Determine what kind of fast and how long. Number three, be wise. Be wise. So be sure to consult your appropriate medical advice or speak to your doctor first. All right, so... I, I needed to take my own advice, right? So when I, when I, you know, had had coronavirus, I, I should have I should have stopped promptly. Um, but start simple. Start simple. This is also part of being wise. Um, don't do water and clear liquids only for 21 days if you've never fasted before. That that would not be wise. All right. So that that's kind of how my journey started. I started, you know, slowly, gradually. And then number four, prepare in advance. Prepare in advance. So uh, if, if you're doing a Daniel fast, get healthy snacks. Uh, if you're doing liquids only, uh, go to the store and, and buy some, some drinks that have some substance to it uh, and, and you know, filled with electrolytes, those kinds of drinks. Uh, healthy juices, don't, don't be drinking juices that are high in sugar. Uh, so, so do some, some research and some preparation. Um, and then here's a big one. Get rid of all the temptations, all right? Throw away the cookies, throw away the candy, you know, put them in the garbage, uh, and, and don't do this. This is a common mistake. Do not gorge yourself the few days before you start to fast. All right, that will actually punish you the first couple of days uh, leading up to your fast. So you actually want to do just the opposite. You want to kind of taper down, um, and, and it will start, you know, if you start to taper down your food intake, uh, it starts to help your stomach and your digestive system in that process. Number five is this, start strong, start strong. So that, that very first day, that very first 24 hours, uh, you know, both on the spiritual side and on the physical side, on that very first day, that 24 hours, you wanna drink at least one full gallon of purified water. So don't drink tap water. If you drink, drink one a full gallon of purified water, you just go to the, the dollar store and they sell gallons for a dollar. Uh, so purified or distilled water, it flushes a ton of the toxins out of your body. So right off the bat. And then plus, drinking lots of water can make your stomach feel full. It just helps you with, with some of the, the hunger. And then uh, be prepared for a headache on day one or day two. And this actually is due to the impurities, the poisons, the toxins leaving your body. Uh, and your body is responding to potentially... If you're breaking a caffeine addiction, breaking a sugar addiction, uh, those are all the things that your body's just screaming about in those first 24 four hours. Also on day one, you want to start strong spiritually. So really focus on your prayer time, read scripture, worship as much as you can to start that very first day on a full head of steam. Number six, recovery time. You want to plan for recovery time because spiritually, mentally, emotionally, you may have to process some wounds, some things where you've been let down. Uh, took, take a look in the rearview mirror of, of your life to process anything that God shows you. And then physically, fasting gives your body a chance to heal itself and to rest. So typically after three days, uh, your digestive system starts to, to shut down. This is if you're doing a liquid only fast. Uh, it's not the case if you're doing a Daniel fast. You're, you know, if you're eating the carrots and the strawberries and the uh, celery, your, your body will still process that. But typically after three days, if you're doing a liquid-only fast, your digestive system starts to shut down. And, and fasting has many, many uh, medical benefits for every system of your body, for recovery time and for resting. And fasting can help, like I already said, fasting can help break the addiction to, you name it, junk food, any other addictions, alcohol, cigarettes, 
uh, any type of, of other drugs, you know, any type of addiction that, that may have crept into your life, fasting has the, the power to break those things. And then number seven is make a daily schedule. Make a daily schedule. So you will need more sleep when you're fasting, so you need to plan accordingly. When will you go to sleep? When will you wake up? When are you going to read scripture? When are you going to pray, worship, journal? When will you drink your water? When will you drink your juice? Uh, if you are doing a annual fast, where, when are you going to have that snack of carrots or celery? You know, set your schedule. Make a daily schedule. And then last tip, number eight, is receive God's grace. You can't do this by yourself. None of us can fast in, in our own effort, in our own power. Don't try to hold yourself to a perfect standard. It's only His grace that's going to get you through this journey that you're going to go upon. So you will be tired, you will be hungry, or you will be hangry, all right? Um, just, just plan for that. Just know that. And, and you will have a shorter fuse with your, with your family, with your loved ones, with your co-workers. But in those moments, choose to trust God's grace. Can you get an amen? Yeah. In your weakness, He is strong. And that's also part of the journey. That's also part of the adventure is to lean on Him. And, and you just, you're going to have to whisper these prayers or, or scream these prayers to God throughout your day, throughout that, that fast. When you say, Jesus, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for this journey. I'm ready for this adventure. I'm ready for what you have next uh, in my life. And you just ask Him. Ask the Holy Spirit. Take me on this adventure with you. Do it partnering with Him. Don't think that you're just doing it by yourself. And, and you just express to Jesus, you know, I'm... I'm prepared. I've counted the cost, as, as we just read a few minutes ago. You know, and, and invite him. Let's do this together. That's, that's the whole point and purpose of, of fasting, is to do it together with him. All right? Amen? Yep. Okay, let's get into to the book of Daniel. You want to open your Bible, open up your, your phone, your Bible app. And uh, so right at the very beginning, Daniel chapter 1, uh, Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, it says this. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. All right. So this is this is the, the Daniel fast. This is the origination of this. We we see this all throughout uh, Daniel chapter one. So Daniel makes a request. So that's what's happening in chapter one to, to his overseer that he and his three friends would would not defile him, themselves. With the king's food. And he specifically mentions uh, meat and wine. And his request is this. So in, in verse 12. He says, test your servants for 10 days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. And at the end of those 10 days, Daniel and the three men, they, they looked healthier and better and better nourished than the, the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. So that's what it says in, in verse 15. So there was a, a big difference physically you know, to, to see that difference between you know, Daniel and his three friends going on, on the, the quote-unquote Daniel fast and, and the, the other men of the king's you know, uh, staff that were indulging themselves in the meat and in the wine. So this is the, the scriptural basis for this idea, the, the met, what many call the Daniel fast, in which a person limits their food choices uh, to basically be whole grains, fruits, vegetables, beans, nuts, and seeds. So from a health standpoint, this diet also excludes a lot of things that it's great to exclude from your, your life, from your diet. Processed foods, additives, preservatives, flavorings, sweeteners, caffeine, alcohol, oils, uh, any products made with, with white flour. So this is, this is us in the modern culture, 2022. This is what we should be eliminating. To, to really uh, help our body recover, but also to help our spirits soar. So this visible change in outcome was most likely due to two things. All right, Number one, it was God's favor on their lives in a spiritual sense to show all of the world and all of the king's people that they were being honored for their faith. All right, so it was a, a spiritual dimension of favor and honor that came upon their lives. And then number two, it's just a, a better way to live. It's a better way to eat. 
And, and so their bodies responded that way. A better way to eat in our, our physiological uh, you know, aspects of, of our body, our biology, our chemistry responds to, well to a healthy way of eating. But then we also see some huge spiritual implications of this way of life as well. All right? So when you live a fasting lifestyle, so, so beyond just a, you know, a few days in, in January, but hey, I don't know if you guys know this, but you're allowed to fast the other 11 months out of the year. So if, if there's a, a spot where there's a, a three-day fast or, or a, a longer fast, you know, pretty much every uh, international mission trip that I've ever been on, I've, I've had uh, a time right before the trip where I really fast, three days, seven days. Uh, sometimes I'll do a full 21 days before I know that I'm going into something that's really intense, a, a battle. Maybe in your own personal life, your, your walk with God, if there's a big decision that you have to make, uh, you know, in, in uh, April or August, and there's, there's some type of crisis perhaps in your family, if you live a fasted lifestyle, when you live this way, when you live a fasting lifestyle, you see and hear from God in a greater way. This is, this is huge. And, and uh, in verse 17 it says this. As, as for these four youths, God gave them learning and skills in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. That's a huge byproduct. That's a huge benefit to, to fasting. We, we see this here in, in verse 17. It says all, all of them, all four of them. Had, had this, that was released to them, deposited to them in a, in a supernatural way. So their practical learning was enhanced when their brains were cleared from, from all the junk, when their spirits came alive in God, and their spiritual senses, senses were, were heightened. And Daniel gained revelation and insight from God in all his visions and all of his dreams. What a powerful outcome from fasting. We can, we can believe and expect the same to happen in our lives. So in addition to the prophetic insight that they gained, God also poured out his favor on their lives during the fast. And so the king, this is uh, verse 19 now, the king spoke with the four, and among all of his men, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they stood before the king. So God opened doors for them to go stand before the king. This, the, uh, among all of his men, none was found like these four. And so God caused these four men to stand head and shoulders above the rest of the culture, and they stood in the highest place of honor as a result of their obedience and their discipline and their fasting. So I, I want you to receive this. When, when you fast at any point in time in 2022, be prepared to receive favor and honor. They're, they're going to come upon your life as you fast and pray in, in this season. All right? And as Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, they stepped into their season of great opportunity. God blessed them and multiplied their effectiveness in every part of their lives. Look at verse 20. It says this. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired of them, he found them, what's it say? Ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were in all the kingdom. So he multiplied their anointing and their favor and their wisdom and their honor ten times what the experts were in the king's council. That's incredible. So if you need, if you need to take it up a notch in any area of your life, if you need wisdom at your job, wisdom in, in your family life, you know, finances, healing. I don't know what it is. This is what we're talking about. Fasting for breakthrough. This is part of it. Is that you can expect a ten times anointing. This is not just something that Pastor Chris is coming up. This is not like the latest and greatest tweet or post from Instagram. Guys, this is right here in Scripture that this happened with these four guys. It said ten times. And, and it wasn't. It, it said the king found this. The king. It was his assessment that they were ten times better. In every matter, they were ten times better than their peers. Every matter. Say it with me. Every matter. Let that sink in. So in your season of prayer and fasting, God wants to pour His multiplication power into your relationships, your finances, 
your physical health, your emotions, your leadership, your work life, your schooling, your children, your marriage, your ministry, in, in this church, in your church, in your home environment, every matter, ten times better. So get ready for God to do this in your life. So I, I hope that, that in, even in these moments, I'm praying that faith would arise in your heart, in Jesus' name, that you would receive fresh revelation, fresh insight for you from God, that, that God would pour out His favor and His honor and His ten times multiplication power in your life. Amen? Amen. Daniel chapter 9. So 9 and 10 are, are some of the most famous parts of the story of Daniel when it comes to fasting. And there's these two moments that actually, and honestly, could be more opposite from one another. Daniel chapter 9 and Daniel chapter 10. So chapter 9, verse 3, Daniel says, I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting. I set my face toward the Lord to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting. So in Daniel 9, we find a remarkable fasting and prayer moment in which Daniel, he has, I'll, I'll just kind of over, overlay the whole entire chapter. Daniel has an angelic visitation and answers to his prayers. And in this story, we actually find uh, four keys to fasting and prayer. So out of, out of this Daniel 9 story, they all start with uh, the letter R. All right? Number one is this, read. So, so we're going to see Daniel was reading the word of the Lord, but this is where it starts for you. Reading scripture while you're fasting and while you're praying. So in verse 2, Daniel says that he understood from the scriptures, so the scrolls that had been prophesied, spoken before, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet. So he's reading. He's reading this prophecy from Jeremiah and says that the prophecy was saying that the restoration was about to happen for the people of Israel. As a response to this promise and this prophecy from the Lord, Daniel's response was this. I'm going to fast and pray. So God's word needs to be the foundation of your time of fasting. God's word needs to be the foundation for your time of fasting. Get a word from the Lord. Maybe this happens before you start your fast. Maybe it happens while you're fasting. But you need to hold on to that word from God. Allow his voice to lead you and to speak to you. Number two is this, relationship. Relationship with God. So in verse 3, Daniel says... I set my face toward the Lord God. So he made, Daniel made a conscious decision to set his face toward God. And we could say it like this. He set his face away from food, right? He set his face away from the cookies and the cakes. He set his face toward God. He makes this conscious decision. Daniel was not just going to go through the motions of a prayer and fasting time. But he instead, he was wanting to engage with God as a person. So he, he wanted to have a face-to-face -face relationship with his creator, his Lord, his God, his maker. So when, when, you're, when you're about to head into a season of fasting and prayer, be sure to set up your own FaceTime appointments with, with the Lord. Face-to-face -face with him. This is what it says. I set my face toward the Lord. So set, set times where you can have face-to-face -face encounters with God before making your requests and your supplications. So you enjoy His presence, and then you make those requests and, and supplications. Enjoying His presence should always come first. Number three, repent. That's the third R. In a different translation of verse three, Daniel says, so I turn to the Lord. So the word repent often carries a heavy feel, a religious tone, a negative tone, but repenting, how many of you guys know, you know, Repenting is actually a good, healthy, positive response. So repent, to repent is to turn, to do a 180, to make a U-turn. So he was turning to the Lord. So in verse 4, it says, Daniel said, I pray to the Lord and confess. We have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against you. We have turned away from your commands. So the people had turned away from God. This is what he realized from reading the prophet Jeremiah. And Daniel was helping to lead his people to lead a response to turn back to God 
And as he was confessing his own sin and the sin of his people, something happened. So actually four different times in this chapter, uh, he says, we have sinned. So verse 5, 8, 11, and 15. So he says it over and over again. We have sinned. So he's repenting for the, for the people of Israel. And we should do the same in our time of fasting. We should ask the Holy Spirit and uncover any wrong attitudes in my heart, unkind words that I've spoken, hurtful actions that I've done towards others, lies that you have believed, bitterness, unsel or selfishness. And turn away from those things. You repent and ask for Christ's forgiveness through His blood. And number four is this. You receive. You receive your breakthrough. In verse 21, it says, As Daniel finished his time of confession, look at this. Gabriel, the, the angel, the archangel, Gabriel came swiftly and explained, I have come here to give you insight and understanding. I love this. The moment you began praying, a command was given. Now I am here to tell you what the command was. Listen carefully so that you can understand the meaning of your vision. So it's amazing that Gabriel says, the moment you began praying, a command was given. It was instant. It was miraculous. It was in the moment. There was no delay. There was no long you know, setup. It was the moment you began praying, the command was given, which we would understand from the mouth of God to Gabriel to come to Daniel to give the, the revelation. God is an interactive God. You can expect God to speak. You want to receive His revelation. He wants to speak directly into your life in every situation. He wants to give you insight and understanding and to receive all that God has for you. So, so don't you just love these come swiftly moments of God? Don't you wish it was always like that? Daniel chapter 9, every day, come swiftly, come swiftly. And we, and we can believe that that happens at times. I love these come swiftly moments when God is speaking, God appears, and He's clearly active, and He's involved in my life. But as we're going to see now in Daniel chapter 10, sometimes God's plan is delayed. And when things come swiftly, you need to rejoice. Because when things are delayed, that's when you need to persevere. So, so go to the next chapter, Daniel chapter 10. And we'll end with this. Verse 13. The demonic prince of Persia has been fighting against me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the most important angelic princes, came to help me because I was stuck. So, Daniel chapter 10 is another fascinating story of angels, demons, demonic power, fasting, visions from God. We get a glimpse into this heavenly war scene in which there's like a, a tag team wrestling move is, is used by two angels against a top demonic creature, right? So this is like WWF style, right? Hulk Hogan and, and Macho Man Randy Savage, and, and, and this is happening in the angelic scene where we have this tag team approach. But the whole story starts with a 21-day fast, as Daniel says in verse 3, for three weeks I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no fragrant lotions at all. After Daniel completes his time of fasting, he's visited by this angel, who, who tells him now in verse 12, since the first day you began to pray. So we're, we're on day 21 in the story. But the angel basically says, on day 1, the first day you began to pray, your request has been heard in heaven. I've come in answer to your prayer. So it's very similar to what we just read in, in Daniel chapter 9, where the angel says, the moment you began praying, a command was given. So don't lose faith in the fact that your voice is heard by God, whether it's in the immediate answer moments or whether it's in the delay moments. The truth that happens in both chapter 9 and 10 is your voice is heard by God. And He responds to your prayers. And, and what we see here in, in chapter 10, though, is but for 21 days, the demonic spirit, this prince of Persia, blocked the angel's way. He was coming to Daniel with the message, but the whole length of the fast, the whole 21 days, there was opposition. But the opposition didn't break until day 21. 
Could you imagine if Daniel stopped fasting and praying on day 19, day 20? But he, he went all the way to the end. Maybe you're feeling opposition in your life. Maybe you're feeling resistance for your prayers. Don't give up. What, what Jeannie was saying earlier this morning. Keep believing. Keep fasting. Keep praying. Stand in faith for your breakthrough. God's message of vision and understanding is on the way. We don't know the timing. We don't know if it's a, a come quickly, come swiftly, or we don't know if it's a delay moment. But we can only imagine the outcome. Again, if, if Daniel, maybe he had stopped on day 7 or day 10, day 14 or day 20. We'll never know. But when Michael the archangel, he's the, the chief angelic prince in God's kingdom, one of them. He comes to help the messenger angel in this 21-day resistance battle. And that angel was then released to finish his assignment and bring his message to Daniel while Michael stayed and he held off that, that spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. That's what it says in, in verse 13. So here's my question. Do you need this kind of heavenly assistance in your life? Of course, of course we all do. God truly wants to send you these holy reinforcements. And just know this, help is on the way. When the messenger angel, when he finally arrives, Daniel says that he felt his strength returning. Man, he had been fasting 21 days. That's, that's the understatement. And the angel says in verse 19, don't be afraid. You're very precious to God. He speaks peace. Be encouraged. Be strong. And after the words were spoken by the angel, Daniel says, I felt strong. I suddenly felt strong. So when, when you're at the end of that fast, when you feel weak spiritually, when you feel weak physically, God is bringing his word to you. And, and is bringing his word into your life. And you're about to get this double dose of God's strength. Just like, just like Daniel said. The Lord says to you right now. Even, even in this moment. Even in this session. In this current situation that you're in. That you're facing. The very real battle that is happening in your life. That's being waged all around you. God says to you. Don't be afraid. For you are very precious to God. Peace. Be encouraged. Be strong. And fear is destroyed. That's one of the other things that happens when you fast. Fear is destroyed. Peace is released. God calls you very precious. Courage and strength are filling your heart right now, even now. Maybe it seems like everything is delayed, like Daniel experienced. But from the moment you began praying, a command was given. From God's mouth to this earth, into your realm and into your situation. And your faith will not be denied. Nothing and no one, not even top demon power, can stop God's plan and purpose in your life. Amen? Let me pray for you. Would you reach your hand? I just pray over everyone in this, in this session right now. Father, that, that there would be nothing on this earth that they would want more than to be face to face with you. And that they would turn to you and they would confess their sins. And you would speak to them through your word. That you would release insight and understanding, just like to Daniel. And, and I believe that you're working in their life every day. And I, I just pray that you would help them see where you are moving, give them the grace to step in and to join with you and partner with you. And, and Lord, I just pray that, that you would pour out persistent faith right now upon their hearts in Jesus' name. And I thank you that your vision is being fulfilled in their lives. They will not fear. They will not be afraid. They are very precious to you. And I release peace, strength, and divine courage into their lives. In Jesus' name, amen.